Hello, ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. This is Rang Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, today we're going to Slitsk East. And today, sir, who do we have in this monthly tournament matchup? On left hand side in blue, Rio P. Tana playing Festoon Dunkirk with Maverick Income. Right hand side in red, we have Shope playing Panzer Division Tatra with Maverick Income. So, Tatra and Festung Dunkerken. So, I guess if you match the two of them together, it's going to be kind of a clean fight. If you think about it, you got the soap going into the sea. I don't know. It was working better in my mind, but apparently the dad jokes are strong with this one tonight. Looking at Tanner, I was actually I was pretty sure we, he's the one who brought Dunkirk to our attention last week, wasn't it? I do believe so. So it'll be a pretty interesting matchup. I mean, both sides are pretty similar in terms of equipment and layout here. This is going to be a whole lot of janky German infantry going at it. Yeah, that's true, but then we have things like the Jagdkampf. Like, these guys are, again, shockingly good, I would argue. Yeah, they're, they're very good. Jagd Pioneers, slightly less so, but what was the last time you saw a hunter that didn't bring up, you know, a flanker with them to actually be effective? <laughs> hey, you're gonna have, like, the barbecue all in one. That's true, I had considered that, you're absolutely right. I had to take that back. Um, Fel Diego's over here, of course, for Tatra, which I actually really, really like, because at that point, now Lenda Schwitzen aren't worthless. Mm -hmm. Um, with a very, very elite 50 mil, you know, German knee mortar. Uh, kind of interesting to see how this all works out. Yeah, we're seeing a pretty offensive maneuver here from Soap up north. He's meant to get onto the hilltop, and he is slowly pushing his infantry here. He's got the cheap light tanks. Up north as well, or those Panzer 38, as well as the Stug 3E. But Tanner has a much more of a, well, not surprisingly, defensive position with his Dunkirk force. And if he can just, really for him, just try to maintain the hill south of the river, you know, get some anti tank on there, some tank destroyers, that'd probably be his best bet to defend a northern town. It probably would be. It probably would be. I'm just watching as the Edkamp Lafette 43 over here pushes back the Stoke E, which is something that I didn't quite expect, but that thing, again, is... It's scary. Yeah, it's pretty much just an autocannon, but you can put it in buildings. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of nuts what it can do. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that's... I have some, an autocannon that's scary since I was playing Battletech and saw a hunchback on the field. Oof. Uh, yeah, um, but P3Ls over here, and, I mean, the, the air conflict effect over here is good, except for one thing, and that's the punching power. It's really great against those autocannon kind of trucks, but other than that, not really great for a whole lot except panic. Yes, and then just taking a look here down south, Soap has been able to, well, get the far southern position, and it's really, really quiet down south. Neither side really wants that smoke. We got a little bit of skirmishing in the center here, but there's a lot of open ground between either side, and neither side is really all that fast either, so I doubt we'll see anything too crazy here. Curious about the three squads of Landerschutzen. Are they finally being moved to the front? They are finally being moved to the front. Um, I guess he was waiting for that 76 2 to get pushed back. Yeah. Hmm. Well, now it's going to be the time for the Panzer Boys to uh, try to snipe him. I, I don't see that happening. Oh no, those, never mind. Yeah, I see that happening very much. Yeah, Puff Matt, that's not really that big of a difference. So the Stug is actually being brought in down south to try and get, yeah, to, well, provide the Stug life. True, 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 true. Uh, I'm seeing a very big, okay, there's 100 millimeter that's looking for the IG-33. That should go pretty well. Um... And the land of Schutzen all get forced out into the open already. So these guys are, they're, they're already dead men, they just don't know it yet. Yeah, and we're already seeing, like, pretty heavy investments in artillery from both sides. So getting the two 100, Tanner's bringing out 105, and all the support guns he has brought out as well. So I can definitely see his mount starting to just turn into your, you know, standard infantry spam slog. With artillery just going back and forth, trying to blow everybody up. Which is kind of a shame when you think about it, because there's a lot of fun, like, little light cavalry maneuvers you might be seeing over here from someone like Soap, with the P-38Ts, or heck, even a couple P-3Ls kind of sitting over there on the back side of it. Um, honestly, it's the only time he's going to be able to do it, since he didn't bring anything else other than A, a cards, and excuse me, A phases for his tanks. Yeah. Uh, the one advantage here Soap will have is just having a lot of cheap light tanks, and especially if how all the terrain is up north. 
These pads are 38 T's and two free runs. Will perform quite effectively. Rotana really doesn't have a whole lot of armor support. He has that Ron Yak Panther, which could be really scary down south. But he has to, you know, rely on more standard Panzer fours and Stugs, which are great, but they're a little bit risky to bring in towns. So I got distracted by the float plane making a gun run. Wow. Oh, both float planes making gun runs. Actually, these things are surprisingly well armored. I, I kind of don't always pay attention to that, but they have a couple of very, very safe, strong strafing runs in them. Yeah, for 40 points, uh, definitely quite rare for Arlen also getting the reconnaissance on the field. He's very clearly have seen this land to shoot an Ospus Rel making its very rest. That's true, but I don't think he's had a whole lot he can really do to stop that. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the Lander shoots in fear over here. You know, still not going to be able to kind of go and push everything back necessarily. Uh, I would much rather have that Feld Jaeger move to the south. But hey, you know what? Having a vague sense of control is better than having a gun at your back, I suppose. And it's 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 worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. And we're also just seeing Sopir as well. Like he has a pretty good offensive force. He has a whole heap of infantry, but there's still just one or two fire support units he cannot deal with. That Panzer four that Stana has. Perfect position, great firing lanes. There's no anti tank in the area to stop him. So, where if he doesn't get too cocky here, where he's moving up, he's pretty much shut down that post for just that tank. Yeah, and I'm wondering if you're going to see the 100s start to engage him. Uh, I mean, there was there was a theoretical idea for it. Unfortunately, that's one thing with Tartar we don't really tend to talk about very often is the fact that, like we saw on Tuesday with another like Task Force Butler, not a lot of infantry based anti tank. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely gonna. Well, I don't think it's going to be the worst thing for him, as there's not a whole lot of tanks you have to deal with, but even if this is a small example of the single Panzer IV, you know, it's gonna really come down to the Panzer 38 ts to try to deal with Wow. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Goddamn, Cast's Curse. Like we were saying, the P-38Ts are actually brutal tanks. They're excellent at dealing with yeah. P-3s and P-4s. Technology is insane. Oh, yeah. Oh, ooh, that was good. Oh, that was good. Um, yeah, that, that certainly was a check at the door. And we're going to see right now 50 mils are going to start to engage the remaining conf uh, you know, Creek's Marine Infantry back on the town. And I'm wondering, is that going to be enough to flip it now? Yeah, this is starting to get a little bit um, overwhelming here for Tanner to really deal with. Really, Tanner's best bet, he can't bring in the light cheap tanks to, you know, counter the light cheap tanks by average so has here. And as you've seen, they've been trading pretty effectively. He just needs to try to set up a good defensive line in what he currently holds on the hill. And then he's probably just have to play the artillery spam game and just blow everything up in that forest with some... 105 justice but it's going to be hard because the 100 mils are already trying to do some counter battery action they certainly seem to be and considering the fact that they are you know widely spaced over here you're not going to be able to engage them in turn very easily mm -hmm. it's good micro yeah and he also i do like tano's kept estk i've said sevens nearby so he can relocate them if need be and one of them definitely does need to be relocated i think uh, that, that sounds like a fairly good idea. Let's watch how this one last round comes in just obliterates it. Oh, no, okay. Different postal code. Um, now, more air capital plants being brought over here to the northern side, trying to go and keep that infantry at its own arm's length, which is, you know, a, a, a you know, valuable idea here. I do think maybe just straight infantry might have been a better call, but that's me just backseating. Yeah, I do like how Soap's using that 50 mil very effectively. It seems he's just very... He is trying to make this far northern push happen. It's a pretty hard area to push, as he still doesn't control the southern hill. And as you can guess, the north, far north is very much a choke point. You no, know, he does have the fire support. The fifth rather 50 mil went down, but he still has the 76. He still has the stug, he has the Panzer 38. And he still has a lot of infantry, so it is a possibility. And what's more, so Griff Robin coming in as well. Oh. So, Verkip for Spring Granata are going to go and, well, Spring. Yeah, and we've seen Panzer 3Ls as well, the continuous theme of cheap light tank spam. The other Panzer 3s are 
more of the premium of the cheap light tank. Yeah, and that's it's one of the kind of the scarier things if you're thinking about it. A P3L is just like, okay, you know what? I'm tired of messing around. I'm going to put a giant gun on this thing to see what happens. Mm -hmm. And at close range, it's a pretty good match to those Panzer IVs. Though Tano has actually done a pretty good job stabilizing the hill position, mainly with just, you know, a lot of disheartened troops, but while well, you're playing Dunkirk, it's what you're going to have to rely on. And also just keeping that Panzer IV alive, especially right now. Can't really afford to lose it. Kind of funny that, that that's such a strange turn of phrase. You know, I've never really talked about it here, but he can't afford to lose it. Well, he shouldn't be have paid for it in the first place. Like, the... <laughs> you can't lose on a unit if you never buy them. That's exactly. how I have like zero deaths in any of my matches. I don't exactly. win a lot, but no one dies. Like, why would I want to buy the farm? Real estate prices are insane. Yeah. Um, now we are continuing to see just again loads and loads of material just kind of jamming itself against one another. And I think did the port go down here in the center? Yes, it did. It's Pack 38. That might be able to kill a lead. Took out the lead P3L. Or was that the, the... That was not... That was the officer. Yeah. This is gonna be quite tough here now for Tandle losing the Panzer IV. He just doesn't have the firepower on the front line here. But it's gonna be about rather so Ken realizes he has an overwhelming force. Well, he has overwhelming fire support. He definitely needs a little bit more infantry if he wants to make his push into the town happen. And he definitely has the opportunity for it. But remember, guys, it is in phase B right now, and Soap doesn't bring anything past B. He figures he's going to have it. He washes his hands of the whole affair, if you know what I mean, by the end of it. And I don't know. I, I feel like, yes, Maverick is a definitely a division you have to be aggressive with, but I don't know that with things the way that they are right now, I, I don't see it necessarily. Well, he, to be fair, he does have that one Yacht Panzer card, but yeah, still in the infantry department, it's going to be pretty even Stevens in terms of his attritional warfare. I think it's really for Soap, if he can keep a lot of his light tanks alive throughout the rest of the match, that should just give him the upper hand in fire support here in the CQC fights. Oh, I see. You're saying basically, you know, one hand will wash the other, you see? Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Sounds like a fairly squeaky clean strategy there. We'll see how it pays out, though. <laughs> I'm sensing a theme here. That's true. Uh, you, you might. There's, there's a certain price on some of the comments that I've made, but um, that, that's a different that's a different time period. More of them, more of them, this is not quite that modern warfare, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, now that I've thoroughly gotten everyone to stop watching this video, returning to the game. <laughs> Uh, we are seeing the 105s and the 150s over here from Soap start to put down some really, really great, really, really great uh, fire suppression, especially on the 105s. So the SDKFs that you were talking about before, I feel like at least a couple of those towing materials have been taken out. They have, and the Rough Ram are also going to be trying to take out the northern position. Getting some okay hits, but it's, not, it's as more of a... I would call defensive barrage. He's not going to be doing anything to follow up through. You know, now he's buying in the troops to do that. Well, I mean, I do the one thing here is that is that the Yacht Panzer, who technically could kill down that road, he's not going to. He's just, he just wants you to know that he could do it if he wanted to. Yeah, especially in this sort of matchup, the Yacht Panzer is, well, even in most 1v1, just basically a heavy tank with its armor value here. And he can just set them up in these good long-range defensive positions. And, well, Tana does have some decent heavy anti-aircraft guns, which can also blow up heavy tanks. But apart from that, he doesn't have a whole lot of options. This is true. This is very true. P-38T back in the in the town is being frisky, keeping those yard comps at um, a fairly good range. Probably a good thing, too, considering the fact that they get anywhere close to him. P38T's, you know, 60 armor value is not going to do anything, really. Just yeah. complete up this squad. It does feel that Tana is starting to gain a little bit of momentum in this town, yo. The Stug did go down. He's using... He, his artillery is getting killed by the counter battery, but Tana is getting to use his artillery more on the front line here. And as you can see, Soap's infantry is getting blapped. So I think maybe sooner rather than later, Tana will try to... You know, Call in the Dunker counterattack to try to kick Soap off his hill. That may very well be. I I do still think that 
there's still an awful lot of red on this field. And the, the fact that the South hasn't been touched, I mean, you know, good on those guys down there to kind of sit out the war in peace and quiet. But I feel like there's a lot of untapped opportunities, especially yeah. down there. Yeah, if Tana bringing the Act Panther down south to try to, you know, capture a few of those flags in the road, right, right in the open, you know, bring just some disheartened troops to be cannon fodder. Yeah, I could work pretty well for him because there's not a whole lot of tanks which can really tangle with the Act Panther on Soap's side. True, true. But it seems he is more concerned about retaking that hilltop, bringing in seven squads, including three Alf Clever. And it's a P3L, yeah, P3L, and 50 mil. So he's he wants to take that town. I'm not yeah. sure I necessarily agree with it, but he wants to take that town. Now, if the Verframan decides to hit the town instead, then I might be a little more, believer, more of a believer. Yeah, and especially just how Tanner is moving up his infantry. They're very much clustered out in the open. They're all disheartened. He could really turn the tide of his attack here if he was to blow them up and then use all of his tanks, which are still alive, to try and get some surrenders. This is true, and I think right now, I mean, the, the Ruff Raman can fire again. I'm hoping he's paying attention to the fact that, yes, everything and their mother is on the eastern side of this town. It's time to strike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely feels like we're getting to more of the uh, climax here now, especially if how Soap has invested a lot. He's pretty much, I'd say, brought most of his light tanks out. Heck, most of his tanks out already. So if he loses, like, his big batch of units he has, this is, I think, going to go downhill for him. Uh, I guess. But at the same time, the Panzers, I think, are enough to kind of keep him very, very competitive. I mean, they, they are pricier, that's for sure. But they're, they're still powerful enough to keep him very, very strong. Of course, the Panther to the northern side, that might have something to do with it, and that might very much be a... I, I don't I don't agree with you kind of moment, but regardless. Oh the one 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 coming in hard, going down harder. It was hard oh, was really so just how bloody deadly it can be, even though just a you know, rinky dink little float plane. Yes indeed. Yes indeed. We see some smoke over here as the fifty was the start dropping smoke to kinda of bring back into that town. Um, a little late to the party, it looks like. Especially as artillery fire comes in to start suppressing 20 mil behind the front lines. Probably gotta kill a 20 mil without too much of an issue there. Which would be a rather big loss. Mm hmm. Yeah, we're seeing tank after tank here go down here from soap as well as for more of these expensive units. I mean, the 222s and Panzer 38Ts are coming up. But, okay. There, yeah, there's not a whole lot of, uh, well, the Sug is pulling back. That's really the main threat here. So it's really just what, what Tan is doing, is just keeping Soap contained in this forest and kind of just letting the artillery, you know, do the work here, such as knocking out the flag falling. Second for from strike coming over here, looking at the eastern side of the town. Um, interesting thought, about a minute and a half late, but interesting thought nonetheless, I still like the positioning of those. Mm -hmm. Gonna get some decent hits, but once again, more of just a defensive barrage, yeah. To buy him a little bit of time, and Tanner's definitely taking some casualties. Jag Panther taking a critical hit, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Tanner's just gonna have to buy another rave of dudes to hold the front line. These Liftroff guys can only do so much. Yes, they certainly can. Jag Panther to North Coast to go down. And this town fight, which I thought, I mean, north of the river, which I thought was going over here in Soap's favor, I think you're right. I mean, he's got the flags for the moment. But I don't know if he's going to be able to actually hold that town. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit easier for him to hold that town because the Act Panther has such a Gucci position looking down the road. At the same time, the Act Panther, if Tana was to bring up here, would be his best bet in routing out heavy armor. He's also going to be bringing in some rather heavy off map artillery, the 194mm. I, I guess people in the 30s were just making up calibers of the artillery guns. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm trying to think about what the the actual conversion would be from 194 back to you know imperial, uh, like the good king would have us mm -hmm. use. Um, but you know we'll see. It's like Apple products. 
Oh, this yeah, right. like proprietary like plugs and munitions. So you have to buy you buy our artillery guns for oh you're gonna have to buy the ammunition from us for the only ones you make it. Ooh. Oh and just just like that the one ninety four apparently is the Yog Panzer killing ammunition because that just took out one of those right on top, which is well that's obviously not what you want to see, but I'll definitely order ten of them now. I hope they still make them. <laughs> uh yeah, you know, I'm sure it's fine. You know, that, that whole, you know, Wehrmacht thing, I'm sure those guys are around. Not a big yeah. deal, right? <laughs> Disclaimer, these channels do not support the Wehrmacht in 1939 to 1945. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the meantime, the town fight, like you said, is in very much in Antanner's kind of position. And right now we're seeing a very, very gutsy BMW. So apparently Steve McQueen's decided to go, you know, west to east here. Decide that Switzerland is not good enough for him. Leading the way as Festung's great ideas start to kind of go and you know, jump past him. Might be able to take out that Panzer Boy Shot 39s. There we go. And now it's an it's attack of the Broken Hearted. Yeah, this is a very effective little counter attack. Tanner has been able to throw up here, even the smoke as well, helping out quite a bit. It's really going to come down, I think, to also just the Yak Panther providing fire support to knock out a few of these tanks. So he's using it, of course, very defensively. You don't want to be. Uh, going too hard with the Axe Panther. But once again, the problem here with Dunkirk is it's all a lot of disheartened troops. And so they can only do so much without fire support. There might be a bunch of disheartened troops, but you have things like the Axe Panther that continues to kind of go through the trees and go through the smoke. And I don't think he's going to get necessarily eyes on the... No, he's not going to. That could have been deliciously oh. scary, though. Yeah, if he going to knock out that stuck, it definitely would have paved the way for continual offensive operations because soap is almost tapped out far north and also in the like pure top position as well it's been blown away by its artillery quite literally yeah on map off map geez yeah that's actually been brutal over here and you can see right now that things like pack 38s firing from the trees down south and the auto coming right back in and more festum and, and yard cops and all these kind of troops just pouring into the fight um I, I completely agree with having his P3L kind of book it back to the east. Considering that that thing, you know, again, all that infantry is just ridiculously powerful. Yeah. Like, just looking at the front line here, pretty much Soap has invested a lot in tanks at this point, and he's invested more and more in, or mostly tanks, so he does have another infantry splurge being brought in. But Tanner's quite the opposite. He has a lot of foot sloggers on the field. They've taken heavy, heavy casualties, but they've managed to survive just enough, especially just the Yacht Camp. They really forget just how deadly his infantry can be, mixed in with the disheartened guys, because once they're getting close, well, they, they have a Panzer Shrek, they can definitely Shrek those Panzers. Yes, indeed, and the Yacht Panther continues to take out the Panzers. So apparently he's thinking, you know what, you, you are the cheap imitation, I am the real deal, and he proves it consistently here and yes. one thing worth mentioning the yacht comps don't have anything that can stand against them nothing on the field stands against the yacht comps they are there and in my mind i think they're probably some of the most powerful infantry on either side in this match 100 percent. it's mainly just also being able to dislodge these tanks here just the terrain really works out to him as advantage you've seen soap is already pulling back a lot of his armor because he knows the yacht camps are coming they're ready they're deadly. And that's the thing, isn't it? Is that, you know, you lose a God Comp squad, and it's like, that's fine. I've, I've made all of your tanks fear me for, you know, 200 meters, 300 meters. You still have to retreat. I can do whatever I want to. You have to come to me. Which is a great area to denial opportunity. And you're seeing Soap is setting up the last line of defense on the little piece of territory he has left on the hill. I think it's really going to come down to Tana just dropping a lot of artillery to finish off at last position. I wonder, I think that there might be one more barrage for the 194, I think. Pretty sure there is. I'm yeah, pretty sure there is. Um, such a position in the meantime, I think he's realizing, yep, Tanner says, hey, there's nothing there in the middle. Time to attack. Which, actually, I want to take a quick look at the, the Flak Kampf Truppen. I think these guys... Hmm. I can't decide whether I like them more or less than a Volkstrom. They have a Panzer Shrek. Yeah, I know. That's, that's but... pretty good for 20 points. Yeah. 
yeah, I guess the Volkstrom over here just are not quite up to the same snuff, so to speak. But, you know, with 15, 15 points, you still have the Panzer Faust, and you have, you know, a, a, a stopgap squad, so I guess it's not terrible. And also, yeah, you got like eight Panzer Faust trivia Yeah. That's a lot of Panzer Faust. Hence, hence the war I've been having with myself, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, checking all along the lines, though, so that is now Tanner's position in the center. And while they're rushing more troops back in there, there's still a P4 that can start to assert itself. Well, before too much longer, anyway. Yeah, and we're seeing the folks from being brought in to try to regain that position quickly. I guess it's going to come down to this 2 3 1 providing fire support, and Ravatana can relocate his Panzer IV into a more suitable position, because right now he needs it on this town to provide some rather important fire support. He certainly does. He certainly does. And right now, I don't know where the heck he's going to do it otherwise. I mean, he's got a 76-2 Zis in the center. Now, unfortunately, it's not going to do a whole lot. I mean, the second that we get a P4 on there, or heck, you know, the artillery decides, you know what? I'm tired of dealing with you. And we're seeing... Oh, no, he's continuing to turn the counter battery. Interesting. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. And in the far north... I mean, not the far, far north, but the hill north has almost been completely taken here. Like, so bad that one lagged panzer, the hatch is gonna hatch on the hill, but I don't think he's gonna be hatching for too long. Well, I was looking just now for the, the Verfram, and Verfram had gone down. I don't know what killed it. Um, there's a, you know, the dark part of me imagines it was the Yacht Panther, but that's just me perhaps being a little bit, um, I don't know, let's say... We're trying to buy into the legend, so to speak. Mm -hmm. The Panther at Tiag's. Exactly. Exactly. My favorite children's book. I read up there with Strumpelpeta. <laughs> <laughs> Which will never stop terrifying me, but that's besides the point. Um, now, we are going to see the last barrage that's going down the northern side. Taste the flak feeling. There's no more flak feeling. No more 20 mic mic over here for uh, soap. And there's an 88, which... Just continuing to chill there, and and, and, and that, that's nice. And he might even... No, he's not going to take the outfit, that's to the northern side. Um, it might even be, you know, scary for half a second or two, but, you know, again, an 88 is very, very easy to counter when all is said and done. Mm -hmm. It really feels Soap has definitely lost a lot of momentum here. He's really been on the defense now compared to... Parrot was going for the start of the match room. He still has a huge point, a decent point advantage over Tanner here, but I don't really see anywhere where he can pick up a flag right now. It's just slowly going to get attrition down. Well, I mean, he, he did at least make it 50 yard line. He made it equal. Um, and you see right now, too, I mean, we have the Festum's Grenadier and the Flak of Truppen. Oh, he's really struggling over here against the Volkssturm. Um, and I want to say, yep, P4 is out of position to support that, and the P3L at 231 is just fine in the meantime. Hmm. And we're also seeing Tano's routes are going to be open up the far southern front, finally, bringing in a heck of a lot of infantry. He's got the recon planes providing, well, reconnaissance support. And even though he doesn't have a whole lot of fire support to really back up his push, there's not a whole lot of defense for Soap to really throw in to stop his push. Yes, although I will say the Landeschutzen Kriegsmarine versus Ostruppen is mildly amusing um, because it's like the wet needle contest from hell. Yeah. Uh, but backed up by those French machine guns, this this is enough to kind of really make things much less positive. Tana's going to flip out flag in the south, which is going to give him that nice old 13-11. So he's doing pretty good, especially opening up that southern flag. That's very much going to overextend soap in trying to deal with this, because it's not a scary push at all. This is a bunch of disheartened infantry sitting out in the open, but that takes time to kill them still. And that's always the kind of funny thing about this, isn't it? Is that it's just, how annoying can I be? It's like, if you're going to die, you might as well die being an ass. Mm-hmm. Which is, in my mind, kind of the entire point of disheartened troops. Yeah, they're just, yeah, to really get shot at. But in this case, because both sides have disheartened troops, it's a pretty even fight. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is like the, the Battle of Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts. Mm -hmm. um, no band, just, you know, bands of, of brothers being shot back and forth. P-38T down south, though, too. I mean, this is this is the moment when you're like, a Czech tank might as well be a tiger. 
Yes, there's really n there's zero anti tank here to stop in at all. So it's more of just a matter of when does he kill all of his infantry. But once again, there's a lot of bodies he has to go through. Fortunately, he brought over five thousand rounds of machine gun ammunition. Yeah, but the question continues to be fifteen nine. How long will it take until he's able to bring it back the other direction? And I don't know that he will. Yeah, I sincerely doubt it at this point. I mean, we've got the IG-33 counter-battery in the IG-18 to try to relieve some pressure off his disheartened troops. And we are seeing Soap, you know, try to do one or two final attacks, regain the northern hill, but yeah, he's he's lost at this point. Those Yad camps are just in such a good position to zook, well, Shrek anything, which crests on over. That's true, and even more so, I was thinking about the fact that P3 over here in the center, that's down. I'm trying to think about anything he might have left. So I feel like Soap has, well, he's, I, I, yeah, I, I really don't know if we have to, no, I, I, I don't even know what he can do at this point. He's, I think he's scrabbling right now, trying hard to maybe get that last little bit out of the bottom of the bottle here, but I, I don't know if he's got anything left. Yeah, I mean, he's noticed he's really just, once he's lost all of his light tanks now, it's just a little infantry disparity, not having it. I mean, it's really just the ad camps, I'd say, coming in clutch and winning those infantry fights. The soap here didn't really have, like, a whole lot of... Well, he had some Panzer Grenadiers, but we didn't really see much of him. No, we didn't, but we, and we're not going to see them either. He's going to tap out over here. And looking over here, I mean, 1,500? I mean, that, that seems about right. Yeah, that seems right. Tano is definitely trading very well towards the end. And that's the thing, isn't it? Is that, you know, for the longest time, it's pretty equal back and forth. And then as you get closer and closer to the end, I'm sure we're going to see the Yag Pants is going to be a worthwhile unit here. 155, uh, Henriksen. Well done to him. Yeah, oh, actually, the Yag Panzer doesn't really do that much. The 194, on the other hand, well, that, that actually did quite a bit. Yag Panzer, P38T, P3L, bunch of infantry. Yeah, off map actually won this game. Yeah, like just it really came down to artillery duel as well, and even though Tanner's artillery was getting blown up more, the time his artillery was alive, it was affecting the front line, which you know was pretty important to win matches apparently. Yes, exactly, exactly. So well done either way though. Yeah. Uh, any final thoughts there then, sir? No. Well, folks, in that case, then we are going to wash ourselves of this particular game. Uh, until next time, I'm Con Ulbrich. I'm Rangru. Take it easy.